Welcome to our Easter Sunday service at Forest Hill Community Church. I'm Nigel, church pastor. Despite the coronavirus crisis, we're here to celebrate the greatest day in history. While God comforts us in our sorrows and griefs, he encourages us as well with great hope for the future. Please shout out loud in your household the ancient Easter Sunday greeting. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We're going into our service and if you can, please have some bread and wine and anointing oil ready for later on. Today is the great reversal, Easter Sunday. It's about death to life, despair to hope, sadness to joy, mourning to dancing, lostness to the salvation of God. Let's pray together on this resurrection day. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can meet together today. Thank you that we can celebrate that you gave your life on the cross, that you won the victory, that you paid the price, that you redeemed us, that you brought about reconciliation between humankind and God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the possibilities of new life that we can celebrate this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today, our sung worship is led by Ruth and Luke and Phoebe. Let's sing. say 
Thank you. Now, most of us know the story of Resurrection Sunday. It's hard for us to imagine the shock and surprise when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb on that Sunday morning and saw the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. Where was Jesus? What's happening? In the upset and pain and confusion, Jesus reveals himself. Rachel takes up the story now. John 20, 10 to 18. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. Now, if you're connected to Forest Hill Community Church and many, many churches around the borough of Lewisham, you'll know that Food Bank is amazing. The whole operation has been upscaled and reorganised in the last couple of weeks. So I think it'd be great on this Easter Sunday to hear from Gary at Food Bank. Over to Gary. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Easter to everyone. I just want to give everyone a big thank you for all the donations that are coming recently. A uh, massive thank you to all my amazing volunteers. And I'd like to pray for everyone. I mean, we are, we're dealing with a lot of changes right now. Um, so a big thank you and a big prayer for everyone, all the staff, that we have enough food, that everyone stays healthy. And let's try and get through this amazing time that we're, you know, people are suffering so badly. So, Lots of prayers for everyone, and let's get through this all together. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Gary. It's great to hear from you. And also a huge thank you to everyone who's donated food or money or time as a volunteer. And also to all the new drivers. Uh, food Bank's moving to a delivery service now, so that the people are kept safe at home. So loads of new drivers have volunteered to help. We're going to sing our second song now, and it's time to rejoice and celebrate today. It's the song Happy Day.
again. It's so good to sing and declare what Jesus has done for us. Each of our services we like to take communion together. It's a bit of a different experience and even if you're at home on your own hopefully you feel part of a wider body in sharing communion. As we do that now I'm going to read from Matthew 26 verse 26. While the disciples were eating Jesus took bread and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let's do that now. Take and eat. Drink this in remembrance of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we can share in fellowship together in this way on Easter day. We've been taking bread and wine together, but when I was speaking to Pat, she felt it was an important opportunity also to anoint ourselves with oil and pray for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit on us, the anointing of God on our lives, bringing the blessing and healing that we need. So if you have oil, uh, please do that now. If you don't have oil, maybe you can imagine an anointing over you. So we take the oil as a symbol of God's wonderful Holy Spirit. Lord, I anoint myself in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for your wonderful spirit. Thank you, Jesus, you died on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, you rose again. Thank you, Jesus, you ascended and poured out your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I come to you and say, I need you in my life. I need the presence and power of your spirit. Pour out your spirit upon me right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, Stevie is going to help us grasp something of God's heart for us on this resurrection day. Stevie will bring the word now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here online. It's such a weird thing to be doing this even a few weeks on, and I don't know how you're coping at home, but it's just a bit crazy, isn't it? We're still going to be in this for a while by the looks of things, but the great thing is that we can remember today is that Jesus overcame the grave, that Jesus has conquered everything, and that Jesus is with us in all, our, in all circumstances. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is our living hope. Um, a few years ago, I wrote this um, Easter poem, and I've shared this on Facebook a few times, but today I wanted to perform it, I guess, as a spoken word. So please enjoy this as I read this. As an innocent man, he was nailed to a tree to bring true justice to the sins of humanity. As he was mocked and his clothes divided up, he cried out, forgive them, they're unaware of their wrong. Then the sky turned dark and a cry came from his mouth, Father, why have you forsaken me? 
And then he gave a final cry and his spirit went into paradise and the curtain of the sanctuary tore for it had no use anymore. And the earth shook and the rocks split apart and a Roman guard saw that he was a son of God, but truly he was the son of God. As his body hung there dead upon the cross, a spear was pushed through his side to show that his heart had stopped. Then his body was taken down and it was wrapped up in cloth and he was put in a tomb which got covered by a rock while all those who loved him wept for their loss. Then early on that Sunday morn, when the women went to grieve and mourn, they found the tomb empty and bare, it's like no one had ever been there. And they went out crying saying, what has been done? Where is the body of this holy one? They were confused and shaken. Who could have done this wrong? Then the women were confronted by two gleaming and white, saying the one you are looking for is no longer here, he's alive. Then the woman ran to the disciples to say what had been done, but they were told by the disciples that they were totally wrong. But curiosity couldn't hold Pete and John. They both went off to see if hope had really sprung. While Mary sat in the garden wondering where had he gone, the gardener came and spoke to her and said, what has gone so wrong? She wept her eyes out saying, I can't find the Holy One. The gardener looked at her and said, Mary, I am he you are speaking of. I'm now going to read the rest of the passage from John 20. She turned towards him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And he said this, as he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am now sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not one was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were, and my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the door was locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Come on then. Put your finger here in my hand. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. But I tell you, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. What an amazing story of hope. And it has just been crazy kind of for the disciples how their lives were totally thrown upside down that the norm of what their lives were changed within, you know, a few days. You know, one day they're doing these incredible things, healing people. The other day after, they're kind of running away and they're scared of the authorities. And in the same way at the moment, our world has been totally flipped upside down by this virus. Our norm is totally eradicated. There's so much uncertainty. I remember preaching at Christmas a few years ago after we had had the Brexit campaign and after Trump had been declared president and after the big um, migration into Europe from Syria after the war had occurred there and saying that we are in a really uncertain period of history. And it's like, gosh, 
that seems nothing compared to kind of what we're going through now with the aftermath of this virus. But Jesus is with us. And we need to remember the amazing things that he did because I can remember, I can imagine that when the disciples were kind of just with Jesus and this had happened, they were probably thinking, you know, weren't we on a boat with him and he kind of did that crazy thing and he walks on the water and then he said a word and the storm stopped. We walked around Capernaum with him and he healed people and lives were restored. We went and had these bustling crowds as we went into Jerusalem and people were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And that was in Mark 11, 9 to 10. I do apologize for the motorbike there. Taking on the religious establishment of the time, Jesus did these crazy, miraculous things, and he was a radical life changer. However, on Good Friday, it seems like all that was gone. All they could see now was a dead convict on a cross, buried behind a rock. What a wasted three years it must have felt to them. And many of us have been in situations where we feel that times have just been wasted. It may be that you've studied hard for an exam, you got a rubbish grade. You had loads of interviews, you didn't get the job. You had a relationship with someone and that broke down. We go through moments of devastation, it's part of life. But God is with us and he is faithful and he has overcome death and he will overcome this in our lives as well. As I've said, devastation and disappointment will be a part of our lives. But the beautiful thing that we carry as Christians is this, living hope. This is what Peter writes in one of his first letters to different Christian groups. He says this, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that will never perish, never spoil or ever fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. That's 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5. We have living hope. Our new life in Jesus is defined by this, that if not even death can hold him down, then what can? If God overcame even the grave, then what is standing in the way of him overcoming what you are going through? Now, some of us, you know, you'll, you'll be at home and you'll be thinking, I, I'm not that amazing person. I'm not that incredible. And I've got these behaviors that continue. I've got all this mess in my life. How can God transform that and renew that? How can God use me? And I just wanted to kind of allude back to a story in the Bible called The Prodigal Son. And there's this artist called Charlie Macassi. And he drew this, he drew this beautiful um, picture and it's got different names. Sometimes it's called the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter. But during the little poem that he writes over the top of the painting, he writes, this should really be called the running father. And what we see in this picture in the New Testament of the prodigal son is the son comes back after messing up and the father is looking out from a distance and he sees his son. And in those days, the father probably would have these big cloaks and he probably picked all that stuff up and he kind of ran looking absolutely ridiculous, looking like a fool. And he embraces his son and he forgives his son and he brings him back into the family. And God did that through Jesus. God looked like a fool. You know, like if you read what kind of the Greeks thought of early Christians at the time, they were like, your God is a slave boy. Your God is pathetic, but Jesus became what was pathetic and made it glorious. Jesus isn't afraid of our mess. He comes into it. He loves us as we are, but he doesn't leave us as we are. He says, I'm going to give you living hope and new life and new freedom. I'm going to bring justice entirely to the sins of humanity, but yet give you the mercy that you don't deserve because of my uncontainable love for you. And let's just take that in. God has come into our lives. God has come into this world. 
He came to save you. He came to save me. And I want you to kind of think of this picture in your heads. Imagine you're looking at the mirror in your bathroom and that mirror is covered with Vaseline. It's a blurry image. And you're looking at it and although you know that you're there, you can't see it clearly. And what Jesus does in our lives is he gets a cloth and he wipes away all that stuff that blocks us from seeing who God's made us to be, loved sons and daughters of the King. And he wipes away our sin and our shame and that we can see clearly and that through that we can see him clearly that God is a God of love. And maybe today that you need to do that. You need to ask Jesus to come and wipe away the mess that stops you seeing who God's made you to be. God died for you. He would have died for you if you were the only person on the earth. He loves us that much. And I'm going to pray to finish. Father, I thank you for everyone watching this right now. I pray they will know your Holy Spirit. I pray they will know your strength and they will know your love. And that Jesus, if they don't know you for themselves personally, Lord, I pray that they would give their life to you now. And Lord, that they would start a crazy, beautiful adventure with you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, so much for your resurrection and your living hope. Amen. Thank you, Stevie. Now, I think it's appropriate to end our time uh, by singing that great hymn, Thine Be the Glory. I know it's a wonderful hymn lots of us love to sing, especially this Resurrection Sunday. So do sing along, whether you're with a family, whether you're in a mixed household, whether you're on your own at home, feel free to sing along with this. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou, O oh, death, hast won. Angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away, kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. So thank you for sharing in today. Uh, do email us at info at foresthill.cc if you've got any questions. Do contact your house group leader or one of the staff. If you'd like to give to the work of the church, it's ongoing even though it's online. 
Uh, there's still lots of things that we do. If you'd like to give, then you can give online to Forest Hill Community Church, or you can make a contribution uh, and send it to here for good. Uh, and especially if you want to give to our new hardship fund, we've had funds coming in and we'll begin to make the first disbursement. So do feel free to show your heart of generosity and to give to the church and to our hardship fund. So see you in Zoom church now uh, and see you next Sunday.